Amen. You may be seated at this time. And I don't know what all needs are in the building. I'm not going to pretend to know, but I know that one thing, this one thing I do, Paul said this, forgetting those things which are behind in Philippians and reaching for those things which are before in Philippians 3. He says he presses toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Philippians 3. And he forgets those things which are behind. And before I go there, I want to give honor to God, who is indeed the head of my life. And I thank him for his precious son, Jesus Christ. And I thank him for the Holy Ghost tonight, who is the power of God. Somebody say the power of God. And I want to thank God tonight for our founder, presiding Bishop Dr. Joseph White. Give him a hand. If you've been in his presence, you know he's a man of God. And I want to thank and praise the Lord tonight for our district superintendent, Elder Jones. You can give him a hand also, amen, as well as our pastor, Pastor Harris, tonight here at New Life. Thank God for you all tonight in the house of God. And those that are not able to be here at this time, I thank the Lord for them as well. And I thank the Lord tonight because he keeps making a way. And I thank the Lord tonight because he wants us to let go and let God. And I know people have made that really cliche over the years but there is truth in that because when you allow the Lord to help you, somebody say help me, help me. to let go, there are no limits in God. There are no limitations on the power of God. There's no limitations on how high, how deep, and how wide. And Ephesians talks about, and to know the love of God, and to know the depth, the breadth, the length, and the height. Talking about the power of God. And you might say, well, what's the purpose of the power? And I had talked about that months ago, but the purpose of the power is so multifold. But even in everyday life, you can look at the purpose of God, the power of his, of his, the purpose of his power in your life. There's a need every single day. Somebody say amen. amen. There's a need in your life every single day. You have, when the, from the time you go to bed, to the time you wake up, to the course of your day, there is always a need for the power of God in your life. You always gonna need God to do something for you. You're always gonna need him to make a way out of no way. You're always gonna need him to bless you. You're always gonna need him to keep you. You're always gonna need him to strengthen you. You're always gonna need him to uphold you by the right hand of his righteousness. You're always gonna need him to keep you by his power divine. You're always gonna need him to keep your health, your strength, your mind, your emotions, your affection, your desire, your will. You're going to always need God to help you. And if we let go and let God do the things that he is desiring to do in us on the inside, there are no limits to what he can do on the outside. There's no limits to what he can do on the inside. There's no limits to what he can do for you in the natural and in the spiritual. Because whatever affects you in the natural affects you spiritually. And whatever affects you spiritually affects you naturally. There is no escape, amen. So whatever it is tonight that's been holding you bound, that's been causing you to not be able to loose and shake yourself loose and emotionally shake yourself loose and uh, in your affection shake yourself loose and whatever it is, I want to encourage you in a few scriptures in the word of God. And the Lord is looking for his people so that he can give us power. He's looking for us to take us to higher heights and deeper depths in life and in the gospel. Because there's so many people out here in this world who are hurting, who are looking for something and someone, and they don't even know who or what it is. But God has chosen us, and he has predestinated us, and he has called us, and he has equipped us to do what he has called us to do. And he has called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. He has made us not ashamed of the gospel, as Romans 1 and 16 says, so that we can do the will of God. And I want to encourage you in a few scriptures tonight. And I want to turn over to, let me go to my first scripture tonight. I believe it's over in the book of Psalms, if I'm not mistaken. And as you're Thinking on the Lord tonight, I want you to be encouraged, as David said in Psalms 27, because many have been going through a great fight of afflictions as 
Paul said in one place, but I want to encourage you tonight that the enemy can't stop you from having the power of God. He can't stop the plan of God. Only you can do that. Amen. Psalm 27 says, and there's a subheading in the Dex Bible, and if you don't have a Dex Bible, I'll encourage you to get one, and if you need one, let me know. We can get that. But it says here, tenfold confidence. Somebody say confidence. confidence. Basis of answered prayer. And if you are wondering, when are my prayers going to be answered? There's a basis for your prayer. And David believed in the power of God. And David, in the word of God, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And we fear letting whatever this thing is go because there's something in us tonight that we have not let go. We have this fear of letting it go. It's almost like we feel like we're going to lose our identity if this particular thing or uh, that we let it go or there's a justification that we want to stand on and therefore won't let it go. But I implore you tonight, I encourage you tonight, let go and let God. Because the Spirit of the Lord has something for you that no man can give you. And the Spirit of the Lord wants to pour out. He's saying he wants to pour out and he wants to pour in. Somebody say, pour out, Lord. Pour out, Lord. And pour in, Lord. He wants to pour out the Holy Spirit and pour it into your spirit. And he says here, the Lord is my light. I encourage you, let the Lord be your light tonight and my salvation. Let him be your salvation tonight. Then he turns around and says, whom shall I fear? What are you fearing to let go tonight? I want to encourage you, as I said earlier in the scripture, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Fear has no place in a new creature. All things have no place in a new creature. But all things should become new in a new creature. He says here, the Lord is the strength of my life. When you are a new creature, the Lord is the strength of your life. And whatever it is he's trying to get you to turn over and to let go, the Lord will replace it with his strength. And his strength will be your life. It says here, of whom, he goes a little further, of whom shall I be afraid? What are you afraid of letting it go tonight? Don't be afraid to lay it on the altar tonight. When you leave out these doors tonight, I want to encourage you to lay it on the altar, to lay it aside. The Bible says lay aside in Hebrews, lay aside every weight and sin. And I'm going to go there, Hebrews tonight, because the Lord is trying to take this church to a higher height and a deeper depth. And if you're here tonight, you're a part of this church. And those that are not here, they're a part of this church. God is trying to take the church, not just the individuals. I want to encourage you tonight, not just the individuals, but he's trying to take the church over Hebrews, the 12th chapter. It says, Hebrews 12 and 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let, we got witnesses in this building tonight. We got witnesses on this side, and we got witnesses on that side, and we got witnesses up here. He says, this is Paul speaking. He says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, in other words, all around us. He says, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. Somebody said, lay aside. Every weight. What's your weight tonight? But the Spirit says, let go. Somebody say, let go and let God. What is your weight tonight? Let go. Say it again, because the devil don't like me saying this. So I'm going to keep on saying it because he don't like it. Let go and let God. What is your weight tonight? Think about it within your soul. What is your weight tonight? Because when your soul is weighted down, it hinders your spirit from receiving power. When your soul is weighted down, it keeps you at a certain level and you can't go no further. You know, I, I, I like reading John Maxwell and John Maxwell has his laws, uh, 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And one of them is the law of the lid. And the law of the lid basically says you can't go no higher than and I'm paraphrasing, but you can't go no higher than your leadership. 
Who's leading you tonight? Who's leading you tonight? Is fear leading you or the Holy Ghost? Who's leading you tonight? He said, lay aside every weight. Is the weight leading you tonight or the Lord? And you can answer that amongst yourselves, within yourselves, but who's leading you tonight? He says, let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. Somebody say, every weight. What is this weight? This thing that we harbor within ourselves, this is a weight. And it could... It, it keeps us from having the power that God desires for us to have. We we'll only get so much as the law of the lid says. I only go so high. And I can't go no higher until I let this certain thing go so I can go to a higher height and a deeper depth. So lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. So he didn't just talk about the weights, but he also said every sin, every weight. In other words, anything that is Holding me back, I got to lay it aside. Whether it's sin or whether it's a weight, a weight could be a person. A weight could be a thought. A weight could be a fear. A weight could be a thing, a person, a deed. It could be anything. It could be procrastination. It could be moving too fast. A weight could be anything. Doesn't necessarily have to be sin. But he said lay aside every weight and the sin. Sometimes we got sin and weights. But he said, lay all that stuff aside. He said, which does so easily beset us or set us back. Two steps forward, then here go the weight. And we encounter the weight. Could be a person, a place, a thing, a habit, a, 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 a whatever it could be. And we encounter the weight and we take two steps back. And we end up not being able to move forward in God. And the progress that God desires for us to have is in the spirit first and then in the natural. Because when you go forward with God in the spirit, by the spirit, in the spirit, through the spirit, he will bless you in the natural. He said, but it so easily besets us. In other words, when something easily besets us, it sets us aside and it causes us to lose ground. But I want to encourage you, he says, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We have to acknowledge the fact tonight that we're in a race. We got to know that we're in a race whether we want to or not. We're in this thing looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, the Bible says. I want to pause right there for a moment. It says, for consider him. When you're going through and when you're holding on to this thing that you don't want to let go or you want to let go but you're afraid to let it go. Consider him. That endured. Somebody say that endured. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. In other words, the opposition that he faced and all the folk that was against him. Consider all that opposition and contradiction that he faced when he was on this planet. When you're going through whatever you're going through, consider him. Consider that he laid everything aside that could easily beset him to keep him from going to the cross, but he laid it aside. Just so we could be sitting in these chairs tonight, he laid it aside. Just so we would have a chance to go to heaven, he laid it aside. So if he laid it aside, why can't we lay it aside? If he laid it aside, why? what's my excuse for holding on to it? Why can't I let it go? Because he endured contradiction of sinners against himself when he had done no wrong. The Bible says that there was no guile found in his mouth. He didn't do anything. He said not a mumbling word when they smote him. He didn't, he, when he was big guy, he, when they tried to do this and that, he didn't say nothing. So consider him when you're going through. And the thing about Jesus was he didn't do nothing to deserve the stuff that he did. Sometimes we got self-inflicted wounds. Jesus had external wounds. Sometimes we did what we did to ourselves. So consider him tonight.
But he's so gracious to us, even though we may have self-inflicted wounds, he still will deliver us from our own hurts, our own decisions, our own past, our own sins. He, did, he still will deliver us from them anyway. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Self-inflicted or not. He said, oh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't designate, well, since you got yourself in that, I'm going to let you stew in that a little bit. No, that's not what the Bible says. He says that deliver them out of them all, those that will serve him. If you serve the Lord, he will deliver you. The problem is that people want it to be on their time frame and not God. But a day to the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. But Bishop was teaching recently, he ain't going to let you go through forever. Now, if you're just going through over and over and over, he was like, wait a minute now. Because after a while, somebody said after a while, God will deliver you if you let go of what it is that's holding you back. And so it says here, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. He says, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. I want to encourage you tonight as I close in St. John, the 14th chapter. We have not strived against blood and we have not done all these things that Jesus went through. And you may say, well, Sister Pastor Harris, you know, it doesn't lessen the blow of what I'm going through right now, what I'm holding on to right now. It doesn't take the pain away of what I've been through right now, but Jesus will. Somebody say, Jesus will. The blood can still be applied because it still works. Don't you know the blood of Jesus can be applied to all of your sins and your situations and everything in between by the power of the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost can cover everything. Even the thing that you won't let go, he will still cover you and give you time to let it go. But when it's time to let it go, he wants you to let it go. Because God is trying to give you something as a replacement. Don't you want a replacement tonight? So Lord, replace it. Whatever it is, replace it. Don't you know that whatever it is you're holding on to or whatever it is you're in or whatever it is you got or whatever you're thinking, don't you know that God has something better for you? I have recognized for myself by the Holy Ghost that whenever God has asked me to give up a thought, a feeling, a justification of why I should think this way and do this and act like this or want this or this, that, and the other, don't you know that God has come in and said, but I can give you so much better. I can do you so much better. If you just give me some time and just hand it to me, I can do better. And sometimes we don't allow the Lord to do better for us. Because we go running to the familiar and to the familiar and to the familiar. But he says, lay aside. Somebody said, lay aside. Every weight and sin which does so easily beset you or set you back. I don't want to be in the same position I'm in today, next year, this time. I don't want to be of the same mindset that I am right now, next year, this time. I don't want to be in the same financial or spiritual situation that I'm in right now, a year from now. So I got to lay aside some things so I can go forward in God. Somebody say, go forward in God. St. John, so I want to leave you with this encouragement, seven, uh, 14 chapter. It says, so let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled about letting go and letting God tonight. He will never put more on you and allow you to go through more than you can bear. If he didn't think you could let it go and come out on the other side with power, he would ask you to let it go. I want to encourage you tonight. It's for your good. Let it go. I don't know what this thing is, but God said let it go because it's hindering your power. It's hindering your deliverance. It's hindering your stability. It's hindering your walk in Christ. It's hindering but he says, let not your heart be troubled. And he's encouraging you to not let your heart be troubled tonight because when you let it go, you're going to feel a release in the spirit. And he's going to fill and refill and refresh you. And things are going to open up in God. And all the things in life will open up. 
So let not your heart be troubled. It's not too late. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way ye know. And the way you know is by the Holy Ghost. The way you know is by the power of God coming in your life. And the only way that your heart won't be troubled is if you let go and let God. I want to encourage you as you stand tonight. Let him do it. Let him fix it. But let it go. Because the Lord has something so miraculous for you. I have not seen as the spirit says and the word of God says in Corinthians. An ear has not heard. Nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for you. I'm not just saying it. It ain't cliche. But you got to let something go. And when you let it go, you don't even have to tell nobody. You ain't got to tell me. You ain't got to tell him. You ain't got to tell, tell her. You ain't got to tell me. When you let go and let God, it will be evident to all. And the power of God will rest upon us. It will rest and rule and abide within us. And we will walk in the spirit. And God will begin to cause all the things that he wants to manifest in our lives to be brought to pass. Lift your hands tonight to the Lord.